So we will s Hello my fellow Latter Day Saints, Kenzie Bradshaw, the Mormon Entertainer here, the most inspirational Mormon in all of Asia. Back once again, it's Tom and Jerry Sims time. Uh, first of two episodes tonight. The first one, entitled, The Bodyguard. So, usual sinning rules apply, let's get going. <laughs> Shock and surprise, they're still not using the theme we know. Okay, I'll take a sin off for uh, Jerry having a very clever hiding slot. But I'm gonna have to put that sin back on because... No. Those eyes, unless you somehow had time to be able to cut um, eye holes out of that... Uh, potatoes label or bag or whatever it is. That shouldn't be happening. That's right, little pal. Open that fender. Easy does it. Now I'm losing that match and I'm free. What was so difficult about simply pushing from the bottom? That would have made it a lot easier. <laughs> Judging by the way Spike fell out, the driver should have heard it, stopped, put him back in, locked it, and that was that. Hey, chum! Boy, I'm your pal for life! Shouldn't you be shaking his right hand for that? Just whistle, like this. Get it? So long, little pal. Spike, you are not Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Number one. The obligatory, infamous, unrealistic sound design for screeching to a stop being used for Jerry instead of a car. And number two, his feet would most likely be burning from how far he was sliding to try and stop himself from going into Tom's sandwich. <laughs> Uh, what was that about the whistle he needed to do? Just whistle, like this. Yeah, that's the wrong whistle, so Spike shouldn't have come along. Is everything okay, little pal? Yeah, he sounds very confident with that. A-okay. And pussycat. If anything happens to me, pal, I'll poke you in the puss. I'll pulverize you. I'll pound you to pieces. That's what I'll do. Pound you to pieces. Like this. Nine times spit should have been flying out of Spike's mouth. Therefore, nine sins. Plus, add another one on, making a perfect ten for the infamous unrealistic physics. <laughs> yep. All good. Let's get going. Just whistle, little pal. Yeah, maybe remind him how to whistle again because he gave you the wrong whistle. Just whistle like this. Oh dear, Jerry, trying to act all tough, eh? Again, the wrong whistle. Any time, chum. <laughs> Jerry clearly loves what he's doing. <laughs> nah, as soon as you see his feet, you'd have been like, uh, yeah, let's just go back the other way right now, instead of this delayed reaction that we always see in these episodes. Jerry is not in a cuckoo clock. Neither are Spike's teeth in the cash register. <laughs> Why didn't Spike just pulverize him at this point because that's what he said he'd do he'd pulverize him he'd pound him to pieces also let's not forget to mention tom pretending to be nice with jerry until he's out of sight of his enemy number one 
That pipe does not have any holes in it. Number two. How is he pushing that without his hands? Because, as you can clearly see, it is not, his body is not making contact with the pram whatsoever. <laughs> Give me power. <laughs> ah, yes, the evil maniacal laugh of an evil mastermind demanding power from the protagonist cliché. Gee, Lewis, who'd have thought Tom and Jerry would start so many cliches? Now, I'm sorry, but how does Tom spot this pretty cat when he wasn't even looking that way to begin with? Oh, goodness me, even in the 40s, Tom's love interests were sexualized. How did they get away with this? Obligatory wolf whistle at someone attractive. Second of all, how did Spike get round the back so quickly that he was able to lift those bin lids and crash them into Tom's head like symbols? But number three, I will give them this for Tom whistling instead of Jerry for this moment but again it's the wrong whistle all do it pal tom's head should still be in the shape it was in after being squashed by those bin lids which results in the obligatory trip to the vet <laughs> Hmm, no. Shaking that machine should not result in gumballs being able to come out of the machine. Hmm, yeah, that's going to be a trip to the vet for Jerry because dipping it in, we're calling it wallpaper paste, shouldn't that, oh I don't know, kill Jerry at this point? Oh, too soon? Like, hold up, where did the other gumball go? He smells it, and it smells funny. Shouldn't that be a big clue that A, Tom is trying to lead you into trouble, and B, the gumball smells funny so you shouldn't be trying to eat it to begin with? And he still eats it anyway. You know what? Double the same count. Because that, as far as I'm concerned, is animal abuse. Mind you, every episode does have some form of animal abuse. Not necessarily by humans, but my point still stands. <laughs> And Tom just broke the fourth wall. How long have you been chewing on that gumball, J Tom? <coughs> How can it be tasty when it was dipped in wallpaper paste and you can't even swallow it? <coughs> ah, dearie me. How do I go about this one? Tom enjoying getting payback on Jerry cliche. Oh. You know what they say about karma? It's an enormous. <laughs> Tom, he is right in front of you. Just eat him and make it game over. <laughs> make your mind up about which way you want to go. Seriously, Jerry? You stop him just to try and whistle again. Shouldn't the three or four times you tried already give you a hint that it's not going to work? Hmm, shouldn't that hole be big enough for him to be able to get through? Hiding that uh, plank isn't going to do much use because Spike isn't exactly watching where he's going. 
The way that Jerry is trying to describe what's going on with him, and yet Spike acting like he doesn't understand what's being said, should give him a very big clue that he's clearly in trouble and Tom was responsible! When you need me, just whistle. And he glosses over it as if nothing's even happened. Gunshot sound effects used at a moment of impact that isn't a gun being fired cliche. <laughs> Baby talk. Good grief. Number one, that's another fourth wall break. And number two, he is clearly telling you that Tom is causing problems! <laughs> oh, now he notices Tom! <laughs> Dare I say, that would have been the perfect opportunity for him to bite Tom's head off. Game over. No. Just no. <laughs> Took him long enough! But of course, you wouldn't be able to have gumball bubbles that big. We interrupt this episode of Tom and Jerry to bring you the storm sequence from The Wizard of Oz. Another gunshot sound effect on a sound that isn't a gun. And just so we're clear, as soon as it goes kaboom, you do not have whistles inside them. Tom digging his own grave to accept his own fate, cliche. Leaves his will to charity. I'll take a sin off for generosity. Well, it was gonna happen eventually. I mean, no matter how many times you whistle, you are not going to be able to get him out because the door is now padlocked. And unless you have a lockpick or a key, you ain't getting him out. So. Just accept the fact that Tom is just going to keep on chasing you. Goody. So, yeah. It's another episode out of the way. So, that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. If you did, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Latter-day Saints notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Part two of this week's podcast on the left. Tom and Jerry Sims on the right. And I'll see you guys for the next episode later. Have fun. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Peace out. And stay faithful. Shouldn't you be shaking his left hand? Nope, he was shaking his left hand. Number one, the obligatory famous... Nope. Also, let's not forget to... <laughs>